Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. I'm back from London Super Comic Con over the weekend. Mingles with Jingles out of the way. Let's get the week rolling with uh, some ups and downs in World of Tanks, courtesy of Borso in the Leopard 1, the German Tier 10 medium tank. Well, one of the two German Tier 10 medium tanks, the other one, of course, being the E50M. And there are a lot of Tier 10 medium tanks in this match. Unfortunately for Borso, most of them are on the enemy team. The enemy have three Centurion Action 10s, an STB-1 and a T-62A, and every single one of those tanks is very, very, very dangerous in a hold-down position, which means that heading due north from the southern spawn on this map, Highway, you have to expect that you're going to be running into all five of those Tier 10 mediums. And unlike the Leopard 1, they can take a shot to the turret. Notice Borso taking time to wreck as much of the concealment in his own cap circle as possible on his way up to the northern end of the map here. Not as important as it used to be back when any piece of concealment would stop a shot, but still, you don't want to give the enemy the opportunity to hide behind anything in the cap circle in case you need to come back and reset the cap. And he's already spotted one of the Centurion Action 10s, and he's very, very exposed in the middle of that field there, so he's either a complete idiot or he's got lots of friends, and he's not a complete idiot. All five of those enemy tier 10 medium tanks are exactly where you would expect them to be on this highway map, and they're all right there. They've even brought a tier 9 medium, a T-54E1, along to join the party as well, so six enemy high tier medium tanks right there on the other side of that low ridge, and in those farmhouses just the other side of that water tower. And you'll notice Borso taking a lot of snapshots here, not fully aimed, and he's, well, he's doing that for a very, very good reason. With the Let's be generous and call it unreliable turret armor um, <laughs> on the Leopard 1. Let's face it, it's pretty terrible. You really can't afford to do anything other than take snapshots when you're popping over a ridge like this. Now, you get away with it half of the time or more because the gun handling on the Leopard 1 is very, very good. And it's worth missing a shot every now and then than sitting around and letting these enemy tier 10 mediums, who also all have very, very good gun handling, take shots at your very, very weakly armoured turret. So he's popping out, he's taking a shot at whatever's available, and he's immediately ducking back into cover. And it's costing him a fair amount of damage, but it's also saving him from taking a lot of damage, because unlike the targets that he's shooting at, he doesn't have good turret armour. And a lot of his shots are going to miss, and a lot of his shots are going to bounce but he's not going to take a lot of damage doing it. And of course, some of those shots are going to penetrate because, well, the Leopard 1 does have a very, very good gun. How's the battle going? They're actually up at the moment, three tanks to two. And things are pretty much mostly under control over here. Although, whoa, that Waffentrager's on very low health. The E75 is kind of exposed over there. The Jagdpanzer E100 has a lot of health but he's about to lose most of it, and the situation in the city in the southeastern end of the map has just crumbled. And this is where the Jagdpanzer E100 makes his mistake. He goes forward too far, fires and misses, and watch these tier 10 mediums punish him for his error. They're just pounding away at his lower glacis, and he lost almost all of his health just in order to... He obviously got frustrated at these guys giving him nothing to shoot at. He went too far forward, and they punished him for it. The city in the southeastern end of the map has completely crumbled, and the scores are even at the moment, but the enemy team controls three quarters of the map. So even though the scores are even, in fact Borso's team are about to claim another kill and go ahead with points, there you go. E75 managed to nail one of those Centurion Action 10s, but the scores do not reflect the tactical situation, which is diabolically bad at the moment, because Borso's team are all crowded into one corner of the map. The enemy team control three quarters of the territory here on highway, and Borso's team are rapidly running out of options. And the scores are very, very soon going to start reflecting that. Here we go, they're now losing 5-6. And they're going to be losing a lot more than that before this match is over. It's at this point when Borso spots his opportunity. Enough of those tier 10 mediums have now been thinned out that it's worth going forward. And he actually bounced a shot. <laughs> that never happens. He actually bounced a shot from the T-54E1. And that T-62A is now the last of the tier 10 mediums 
over on this northwestern sector of the map. E75 making his move, yelling for assistance. Borso goes out looking for the shot. T62A obviously turns to kill the E75. He is the priority target, and somebody else was shooting at the E75 there. We're going to see who that was in a moment. You have to expect Borso to take a hit here, but he doesn't. The T-62A misses by a mile, and he burns to death. Borso just did over a thousand damage to that T-62A. Who plays at tier 10 without equipping a fire extinguisher? Well, apparently that T-62A does, so hooray. Bonus damage, and uh, Borso's first proper kill. And oh, hello. Waffentrager Panzer IV. Borso lands a shot on him. Hasn't been spotted. Takes concealment behind this bush, lines up a second shot, you never know, he may still be there. Type 62, respots the Waffentrager, he did relocate, but he's lit up good and proper, so Borso continues putting shots into him, and that's when the enemy M103 pops up behind the Type 62. The Type 62 is in all kinds of trouble now. But Borso doesn't have any shots on him, so he finishes off the Waffentrager. Enemy M103 down there is already on three kills, he's now on four kills, he's finished off the 3090, the Type 62 starts shooting at him, M103 obviously turning around to put some fire into the Type 62, but the Type 62 lands another hit, unfortunately that's all he's going to get. M103 now on five kills. If Borso's got anything to do with it, he is not going to get a top gun. They've just lost another tank, there's only him and the Centurion Action 10 left, and they're being capped. Where's the M103? There he is. No Top Gun for you, Sunshine. I'm just going to pause things here for the moment. Take a look at the map. At the moment, it's two against five, and we can see that four of the remaining enemy tanks, with the exception of the T-57 Heavy, who was last seen at the northern end of the town on the eastern end of the map, four of the remaining enemy tanks are pushing the cap. In fact, one of them is capping, and the rest of them are pressing that heavily outnumbered Centurion Action 10. Borso has obviously been spotted after killing the M103. Now remember the position that Borso's in here, and remember that he is now spotted after shooting at that M103, because that T57 Heavy, you're not going to believe this. Watch what happens. So he's been spotted, and obviously none of the four guys that are pushing the cap and are about to kill that Centurion Action 10 can shoot him from here. But where's that T57 Heavy? Well, while you're pondering that question, Borso's got a T110E4 who needs shooting up. There we go. Land in one shot. Enemy E75. Doesn't have a shot at him. There's the T57 Heavy. So, a couple of questions spring to mind. What the hell is he doing there? And is he AFK? Well, no, he's not AFK. One, he's just started moving. And two, he was last detected right at the northern end of the town on the eastern end of the map. So, between then and now, he's obviously moved all the way over here. And he's got Borso with his ass hanging in the breeze, in the middle of the open, no concealment anywhere. All Borso can do is keep moving. All the T-57 Heavy has to do to win this match is to sit still and aim. So, of course, what he's done is move at full speed while using auto-aim, firing at a target that was moving at 40 kilometers per hour at a range of 400 meters, and by some miracle, one of those shots actually hit the target. So the T-57 Heavy could have ended the match there and then, but, well, you know, reasons. But it doesn't really matter. All Borso can do now is attempt to get some more damage done on the T-57's last known position, because the match is about to end to capping. Or is it? 98% base capture thrown away because, well, surely five tanks can kill one half health Leopard 1. Now remember that T-57 Heavy. So far he's fired four shots and hit Borso with one of them. And any second now, bang, there it is. Now that is the second shot that the T-57 has fired at Borso that has actually hit and done any damage. By a remarkable coincidence, it's also the second shot that the T-57 Heavy fires in the entire game that hits anybody and does any damage. He fires 11 shots in this match and those two are the only ones that actually do anything. Now, remember that statistic, because it's going to make what the T-57 Heavy has to say towards the end of this match very, very amusing indeed. But for now, Borso's got himself a T-110E4 problem. The E4 has a 750 alpha damage gun, but it's got terrible gun depression and terrible gun handling. 
He is therefore a one-shot kill for this E4. He's also a one-shot kill for the T57 Heavy, but I've already spoiled that one for you. <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. Borso's fired. The E4 is now a one-shot kill. Knowing that Borso's fired, he comes over to take the shot, but that lousy gun handling means he misses. Firing on the move, not fully aimed. Borso, understandably, getting a little bit flustered, also misses his second shot, but he's going to reload well before the E4 does, and he finishes him off, while ensuring that he doesn't get into the same spot that allowed the T57 to plant a shot into him from the side. So, it's now one against four. Where are the others? Well, they were all up here in front of him, with the exception of the T-57 Heavy. Oh, there's the E-75. Snaps a shot, goes right through the lower glaces. One down, three to go. Oh, there's the E-5. Didn't see that one coming. He's looking for the kill shot. He's looking for the kill shot. And he fluffs it. It's now <laughs> one against two. We know the T-57 Heavy is somewhere up on the northern end of the map, which means that has to be the E-50, who has finally decided, actually, perhaps we had better cap after all. Now, the E-50M has a very, very good gun, but it's 390 average damage, so he's going to need a good damage roll in order to one-shot kill Borso. It is not impossible for him to do it, however. If only we knew how much health that E-50 had. We know more or less exactly where he is, and the E-50 has to... Oh, there he is! He's a one-shot kill, and we've got his lower glacis! Yes! He's nailed the E-50! It's now a one-on-one. -on -one. From five against one, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. All he has to do is find and kill that T-57 Heavy. And judging from the T-57 Heavy's performance, it shouldn't be too difficult, but he is a one-shot kill for that Tier 10 Heavy auto-loading enemy tank. He has a 400 average damage gun, so he doesn't need to get that high a damage roll. Borso stops in the cap there to ponder his options for a moment, and, well, the Leopard is a very, very fast tank. It's not inconceivable that he could make it all the way around the map here and start capping the enemy base. There's plenty of time for it. And so that's what Borso decides to do. Moving up the flank here, using the road embankment there to give him some concealment. Stops behind the trees and just stops for a look. Just, just to see whether or not that T-57 is going to be dumb enough <laughs> to do this. And, um, well, yeah, turns out he is. Borso's first shot by some miracle didn't actually do any damage, but that guy's got 1,500 health. And you'd think that at some point he's going to be aware that he's actually taking fire and <laughs> might do something about it, like, oh, I don't know, you're a tier 10 heavy tank. Even if you can't see the target, you know where you're getting shot from, perhaps. Turn the front of your tank to face the source of the fire. I hear that's where most of your armour is. <laughs> But no, he just keeps herpa-derping across the road in the middle of the open, heading back. Well, perhaps there is some element of thought going on here. He does at least appear to understand that his base is liable to come under threat. And, oh, hang on a minute. What's he saying in chat? And this is where things just take a turn for the surreal. He's offering himself up as a kill to Borso. Perhaps he's feeling generous and he wants Borso to get the Kolobanov's medal. And the Radley Walters medal. No, he's doing it because his team... Wait for it. Wait for it. There you go. <laughs> no, he wants Borso to win because his team is full of idiots. That's right. Borso's done over 8,000 damage and he's on 7 kills. But this T-57 is going to let him win. <laughs> like he could stop him. In order to punish his team for playing badly. This from the T-57 Heavy, the top tier, tier 10 auto-loading heavy tank, who has fired 11 shots and only hit and done damage with two of them in this match. A level of lack of self-awareness that is absolutely breathtaking. Borso earned himself the Ace Tanker, the Radley Walders medal for his eight kills, four of them were tier 10s, Kolobanov's medal for standing alone against five or more enemy tanks and winning the High Caliber Award, and obviously also the Top Gun. Borso did 8,769 damage in that match, not far short of 9,000. And where's the guy who let him win? <laughs> where's the guy without whom all of this would not have been possible? There he is, fourth from the bottom on the enemy team list, with 738 damage done. He fired 11 shots, 
and only two of those hit, and he's in a T57 Heavy. Now, Borso, before you get too carried away and start writing your acceptance speech, because judging by these results, it might be very easy for you to think that you actually won on your own merits by, you know, doing nearly 9,000 damage and getting 8 kills and earning a Kolopanov's medal, but that's not actually the case. No, you actually won because Superstar Steve in the T-57 Heavy let you win. <laughs> and he let you win because the rest of his team played so badly. The guy in the E4 who did nearly 10 times his damage, he's an idiot. <laughs> his entire team were full of idiots, and so he very graciously decided that you deserve to get the win. So when you're writing your acceptance speech, remember to thank Steve the Superstar and the T57 Heavy, without whom that win wouldn't have been possible. Where do we find these guys? <laughs> I don't, I, oh, no, I've got nothing. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today, hopes. Hopes, folks. Um, getting a bit confused there. Forgot now to speak English for a moment. Uh, that's it for today, folks. I hope you have been as amused by this replay as I have been. And also, thank you so much for sending this one in. It really brightened my day up. And I hope the rest of you enjoyed it as well. In the meantime, take care. And I'll catch you next time.